Hello guys, it's a 9 game NBA slate for January 8th on this Wednesday. Starting off at point guard, James Harden, um, I was going to go ahead and talk about him to start. He's definitely going to be the top play on the slate without Russell Westbrook playing today. And uh, this is a matchup that is one of the best uh, for any team. And now you get Harden, who we know as one of the uh, highest usage players in the game, without another high usage player in Westbrook being out. This is just an amazing spot for him. Uh, he's just an automatic cash game lock. Tournaments, you definitely need to have this dude as well. Um, he's He really could be uh, like nearly, I want to say like 100% kind of guy, like exposure-wise, but it is a nine-game slate. Um, so I think that definitely you should make some lines if you're multi-entering. Uh, uh, that you go with Luca or Giannis, Trey Young, you try to spread it out against or with all these studs because definitely there is a chance that um, Luca could definitely outscore him because he is a little bit cheaper and he's also without Porzingis, so that's gonna lead into Luca, which I think is a terrific play. It's definitely a pivot from James Harden. It's gonna be tough to play Harn and Luca in the same lineup and expect to win because it's just like really hard that way unless there's like crazy value. Where or which on this slate there is some value, but nothing that's like oh there's multiple three K guys that can just plug in and play. So I think Doncic is a good play, obviously with uh, Porzingis uh, still out, um, but Harden without Westbrook, it's just gonna be him doing everything for the Rockets, and it's just an amazing matchup for him. Whereas Luca, he's just in a tougher spot. Gary Harris, terrific defender. They have a lot of other guys. Um, Michael Porter Jr. could possibly be starting at small forward. He's a pretty lengthy guy compared to Will Barn, who's not uh, that great of a defender. And there's Paul Millsap, Jeremy Grant, so many guys that definitely um, can provide some resistance against Luka. Next, Trey, uh, Trey Young, 9, 9,700 against the Rockets. The Rockets' defense is not great at all. And now you're taking away Westbrook, which probably means that this game definitely has a higher chance to stay close. And also, um, Trey Young is pretty much blowout proof because he just plays like high 30s in minutes, close to 40 every single night. Regardless of the score, if it's a blowout, he's still going to be out there. John Collins is back though, so usage is going to be as high, but that definitely helps Trey Young um, because the defense has to uh, account for Collins and not just totally focus on Trey Young. So 9700 the price is going up, but the matchup uh, is really uh, a pretty solid one for him. And... Uh, I think Harn, Trey Young, kind of like that uh, little stack right there, definitely makes sense for tournaments. Next is going to be Kyle Lowry. He's probably going to go overlooked, I feel like, on this slate with Fred Van Bleed out. Because 8600 for Kyle Lowry without just pretty much everyone on this uh, Raptors team. Um, he's just going to be forced to play heavy minutes once again on a back-to-back -back even against the Hornets, who they don't play fast at all. They're actually pretty slow. Um, in terms of pace in the league, but they are a pretty bad uh, defense. So Kyle Lowry should be able to play his usual role here. Um, I think he's an absolute lock for 40 drafting his points, and I think 45 is pretty easy. He's definitely a, in um, cash and GPP consideration for me. Just going to depend on how um, the slate shakes out, but Lowry is definitely going to be a guy that I'm going to have a pretty good uh, percentage-wise. Next is going to be Lonzo Ball, 7,400. Again, it's a tough matchup for him, just like the last one against the Jazz. The Bulls, they're not as great of a, as a defense compared to the Jazz. They don't have like a shot block or Rudy Gobert down in the paint, but the Bulls, they have been really solid defensively uh, this season. Um, they're going to be without Wendell Carter, so maybe that makes them uh, take a bit of a hit on that end, but Lonzo without Drew Holiday here, 7400 price is going up, but he deserves this price. The way that he's been playing and the kind of role that he's going to have to take on along with Brandon Ingram, Lonzo definitely is um, going to be in my player pool for today. And then next, 6K, Eric Bledsoe um, against the Warriors. Definitely there's blowout risk. I'll get to that uh, more with Giannis, but um, usually these Bucks, they're other guys than Giannis that can definitely reach value. Um, even in a blowout because they spread out their rotation where they pretty much just stagger all the starters and um, because Giannis is always going to be like a five-digit price tag player 
all these other guys like Chris Mullins and Eric Bledsoe, they're much cheaper, and that means that they're going to have to do like as much as Giannis. And so in a, just a tremendous matchup, um, the only thing that you're going to have to factor in is the blowout. But if you're, again, building multi lineup, multiple lineups, then you should probably have a little bit of Eric Bledsoe just because of um, the matchup. He is 6K, which I think the price is okay because you don't really know what the minutes are right now. Um, I would say that he probably can get to 30 here if the game is close and there's no foul trouble because it was a blowout last time, so he didn't play um, as many minutes as he should have. So it does look like that Bledsoe probably could have got close to 30, which I think um, at 6K would be way too cheap. Next is going to be Marcus Smart. Uh, just again, if Kemba Walker is out, you kind of just um, look to Marcus Smart. I don't want to say you just plug in and play him because the matchup is not as great as previous uh, games, but Smart's price still, it's pretty cheap. It's going up, but 5,600, definitely a guy that can just contribute in a lot of ways. He shot terribly. He's never known for his three-point shooting. He's always known for his defense toughness, but um, he's never going to be afraid to shoot, so if you get like a good shooting game where he still gets um, the defensive stats and he's a pretty solid rebounder, he plays bigger for or bigger than his height, um, he's pretty much the point guard. He's not going to be like the typical point guard who ball handles the, like every possession because they have Tatum, Brown, Hayward, all those guys that definitely are solid, but Marcus Smart would play really heavy minutes if Kemba Walker were to miss, so he's going to be my player pull for sure. If Kemba is going to be in, then I'm not going to have Marcus Smart. Next, Aaron Holiday, 5,400. This is going to be the same thing with Smart. If Malcolm Brogdon is out, who is currently questionable, then um, I'm going to have him in my player pool. I think that I prefer to go up to Smart if uh, both Brogdon and Kemba are out over Holiday. Um, but Holiday, just somebody that definitely has a pretty solid upside of 40 if Brogdon is out. It is a tough spot for uh, the Pacers overall, but if Sabonis were to miss as well, there's also elevated usage for all these other guys. The Pacers do seem to be priced up though, so um, in a tough matchup, the usage, all of that, it kind of just balances out. Next, Deontay Murray, 5,400 against Boston. Boston, um, they're... Uh, they're generally a pretty solid defense. They play pretty slow, so it's usually pretty tough. Not really something that I want to target, but Murray is just a big point guard who can contribute in multiple ways, and he usually is capped at 30. He hardly ever reaches 30 minutes, um, but it does look like, again, with the blowout last time he played 26, he could definitely play like 28 at least or something if the game is close, which I would say that it should be here with um, the Celtics being at home and the Spurs always usually being in competitive games. Murray just seems a little bit too cheap, even in like the limited minutes that he's been seeing. He's still putting up 30-plus uh, pretty uh, frequently, and so that means 5,400 is going to be too cheap for him. And then last play is going to be Isaiah Thomas at 4,500 because he's just a guy that's always going to be very low-owned. Um, only if Bradley Beal is out, though. Because he sometimes just doesn't close Isaiah, or not Isaiah, uh, Ish Smith. He checks in um, in the third quarter and sometimes he just plays the whole game. So that means that Isaiah is just not going to check in. There have been um, instances where they both um, play alongside a close, but that's kind of tough. That means probably both of them are have to be playing really well. And they're both pretty small guys, so it makes it tough for them to close. But um, it's definitely a matchup that it could happen if they both play well because Orlando, they do have Fultz and uh, Augustine, so sometimes they go with double point guards, so it makes sense. And even if they don't do that, Evan Fournier is just a shooter, um, so he's not a guy that's going to be putting it down on the floor, dribbling, driving, doing all that. So you definitely can put um, a smaller guy on Fournier just to chase around him because he is just pretty much a pure shooter. So it makes sense to have some shares of Isaiah Thomas' um, in tournament. Or in tournaments because he's a guy that definitely can win you one. On to shooting guard, James Harden, already talked about him, he's just a phenomenal play. Zach Levine, the matchup is great, but the price is just going up there. Definitely he has a terrific ceiling, um, he can definitely hit that in this matchup, but it's just tough for me to get there when he's 8900 and I'd just probably rather play like Kyle Lowry for the price um, that's close to him or just really pay up to Trey Young, who's only $800 more. Um, so Bradley Beal, 8,500, if he's playing um, without any limit, uh, I would definitely consider him because Jonathan Isaac is out, and that definitely takes a, that means a uh, pretty big hit for these Magic. And so Beal, 8,500, is going to be too cheap if he is able to play without any limits. Evan Fournier, 
um, on the other side, just the Magic are in a very great spot. Um, the Wizards usually keep games close, and it doesn't matter if Beal is in or not. It's just something, somehow the Wizards are just pretty good, actually, in keeping the game close, whether they win or not. And um, that usually means that uh, because they play so fast and want to play defense, that the other team's going to have at least like one or two guys, usually multiple, that hit 5x or are on the tournament winning lineup. So Evan Fournier, he gets a little bit better usage without um, Jonathan Isaac. He's 6k, he's definitely priced pretty nicely. He's playing heavy minutes. Um, you're going to get lineups where they close with like Augustine, possibly. Or, or Terrence Ross in there, um, and they take out Weston One do with the usual guys. So Fournier is usually going to be in the closing lineup. He's a guy that can do a little bit of um, the other categories, the peripherals, but he's usually just a scorer. He's a shooter. He hasn't been shooting that well, so you definitely could get like a solid game. It's going to be a fast-paced game, so probably we should see way more shots than just eight, which definitely that's kind of unexpected out of him. So I'd say Fournier is a guy that I would definitely want. Um, in tournaments and then um, next is Alec Burks 5800 just another guy in this Bucks uh, Warriors game that's going to be way lower owned because people are going to be fearing that blowout but if you think or if you just want to play it as if it's going to stay close I think that you can definitely play Giannis with um, at least two Warriors because it's going to take multiple Warriors to keep this game close the Bucks are just too good and the Warriors are still going to be without D'Angelo Russell that means that all these other uh, Warriors guys, who I should say that are way too cheap, they're all under like 7k, um, a lot of them are around 6, 5, so 60, 6 to 5k, so Burks 5800, he's definitely going to be one of the main guys that keeps this game close, if it is going to be close, along with like Draymond, um, Glenn Robinson, Damian Lee, some of these other guys that you definitely can have some exposure to if you think the game stays close or you want to play some of the Bucks. Next is going to be JJ Redick, 5100, because of uh, Drew Holiday being out. The Bulls having a solid defense once again, but Redick, he's going to have to take more shots. He's going to have to take on more of an offensive role. So 5100, um, he's going to have to do more scoring. Makes sense. Um, he's going to be in my pool. And then Eric Gorn going to be one of the popular value plays on this slate. 4400, probably going to be able to start at shooting guard with Harden going to the point. This is just a terrific matchup for all these Rockets um, because Westbrook is out. So Aragorn, he should be able to get, or get um, double digit shot attempts. He's going to get some good looks because James Harden is going to be the main guy and possibly he gets doubled or something. Then the Rockets, other guys like Aragorn, they're definitely going to be able to pick up um, or just take advantage of the opportunity. Aragorn is not going to play on Thursday when they play OKC on the back to back. So he shouldn't be limited at all. There's no really concern for the back-to-back -back for him. So Aaron Gordon makes sense. 4400 still too cheap in the only races price. Next is Tyler Hero if Justice Winslow is out. Just because he's so cheap. 3800 even in a tough match against the Pacers. Um, even better if uh, Malcolm Brogdon is out. But um, Tyler Hero, he's just a guy that if he's able to get hot, 3800 he's going to be too cheap. Because that means he's going to close the game if he's shooting well. And he's probably going to play around or over 3 minutes. So makes sense for a tournament play going to be very low owned i'm going to have very little of him even if winslow is out but just the guy that there's a deserves a mention because he is underpriced same thing with duncan robinson if winslow is out he's a guy that takes a lot of shots when he's out there he's known for his three-point shooting um he's not as uh, good of a ball handler as tyler hero is but he's 3700 and also he's small forward eligible so if you need someone for the forward position you can plug him in if you just look at his numbers he's getting um a lot of minutes and he's just not shooting well so on a side that gives you a three-point bonus if he just knocks out a few more shots 3700 he is pretty big i think he's like six eight or six nine he definitely can get you those rebounds and he's just shooting a little bit better um again he's going to be able to hit 5x with ease um on to small forward brandon ingram at the top 8800 because uh there's going to be no drew once again same with alonzo but just the defense it is pretty solid i'd say ingram's price is um, about right it's he, you're not really getting a discount but he definitely has a really solid ceiling of 50 possibly can get into 60 even um just because of the role the game should be able to stay close so i do like ingram here um and then jimmy butler 8200 he is going to be probable against the pacers um he seems like he's a pretty solid option um even if winslow's out or in because he's still going to be the main guy here for the heat 8200 seems like a good price tag once again so 
he's just a guy that we know he does a little bit of everything. He can contribute in just so many ways, if, even if he's not shooting well. So he's always going to be in consideration for me when he's this price. Next is um, Jason Tatum and Gordon Hayward. Jalen Brown's fine too, but I think I'd rather go with Tatum or Hayward um, because uh, they're bigger, they play at forward positions, and they just usually get more rebounds. And um, Tatum usually, I would say, is the more talented guy. So um, when you're only you know $200 apart, uh, well, apart from Brown, I would just prefer Jason Tatum. All these guys are going to be in play if um, Kemba Walker is out once again. The Spurs, they're not that great of a matchup, but they really aren't that great of a defense. So even though they play pretty slow, it makes up for when they're not an efficient defense. So all these Celtics guys are going to be in play. And then next, DeMar DeRozan, 6,800 against the Celtics on the other side. Just a guy that is really consistent. Um, he's been pretty much an automatic law for 5x recently. And even with Deontay Murray playing, he's still pretty much putting up um, really solid numbers all around. And 6,800, it's, uh, it just seems too cheap, even though it's a tough matchup. Next is Draymond Green, just like all these other guys on the Warriors that I mentioned. He just seems cheap. He's definitely a guy that gets your triple-double. Minutes are always inconsistent because of the season the Warriors are having. But if the game stays close, it makes sense for Draymond to um, have been you know putting up some pretty good numbers troy brown if uh bradley beal is out 5400 jordan mccray 6600 so it's not going to be like a lock um i think he definitely deserves to be mentioned but troy brown he's a lot cheaper and he's definitely a guy that can just contribute um pretty well similarly to mccray and then the next terrence ross 4800 it's just a good matchup. He's always um, a really streaky shooter. He's pretty score independent, so you're going to need him to just have a really good shooting game, but there was a mention because of Jonathan Isaac being out. And then Glenn Robinson, 4700, another guy on the Warriors that um, if you want to play it as if the game's going to be close. And then Tim Hardaway Jr., 4400, because um, he's just going to have to take a whole lot of shots with Porzingis out. He's going to be the second option. For the Mavericks here with Luka and Denver, they're a good defense, but Tim Hardaway, um, he probably plays uh, more minutes. It was his first game back last time, so he only played 22. There's definitely potential for him to play 30 or more, and we know him as a scorer, and they're going to need it, and he's pretty affordable. Next is Josh Hart, 4200. Probably my preferred value play out of all these guys that I've mentioned, along with, we'll get to Michael Porter later. 4200 because he's probably going to play 30 plus minutes he got into foul trouble last time so that's why i only played 27 he's a guy that rebounds really well for shooting guard we saw it with the lakers um he's just a guy that can get um a lot of rebounds at his uh, position and he's a, a pretty solid shooter he can drive take the ball to the rim so i like josh hart seems like a pretty solid value play he should be able to start again for drew holiday so makes sense uh he's really too cheap at 4200 and then michael porter if he's able to start for will barton he's a guy that just does a lot of things out there. He has a pretty solid usage rating, um, even though he's only played a few games uh, of a uh, significant time. So Michael Porter, 3,800, similar to Josh Hart. I think you'd definitely play these both both these guys together and try to load up on studs. Um, but if you want to choose one, I'd probably lean towards Josh Hart because I feel like the minutes are a little bit safer. So um, I like Hart a little bit over Porter, but definitely can't go wrong with going Porter if you need that $400. Next, on to power forward Giannis, just once again with the Bucks, uh, he's probable. So if you want to pivot off of Luka and James Harden, definitely a guy that has a similar upside um, to those guys. And then John Collins going to be 8K against the Rockets. It's a good matchup for everyone on the Hawks team. It's just if the game can stay close. Collins is also a young guy, but he usually doesn't get that much blowout run, so it is definitely tough to trust him if you think that it's going to blow out, but I would expect him to have a pretty solid game here. 8K got into foul trouble, I believe, against uh, Jokic last time out. Um, but Jar Jabari Parker is going to be out, so usage seems to be um, pretty concentrated with Collins, Trey Young, and Herter as the third guy. Collins, 8K, price going up, but still, he has a really solid uh, ceiling of 50 and he's, I, I believe he reached 60 like last season or something. So he's a guy that definitely deserves a mention. Next is uh, Jason Tatum. Um, I already mentioned him a lot with the Celtics guys, but he just makes sense. He seems a little bit underpriced if Kamoa is out. And then Marcus Aldridge, 7,300. Boston, 
They could be without Daniel Tice in this one. He's currently questionable. If he's out, that means Enos Kanter is going to be playing, and we know the kind of defense which does not exist that he plays. So Aldridge is going to have just a very good matchup here against the Celtics, even though it's away. Um, we know Aldridge as a guy that has some pretty severe splits home and away. He usually plays a lot better at home, but it is a pretty um, undersized front court, and also without Tice, they're going to be. Um, really uh, missing him uh, with Canner going to be having to guard Aldridge so without Robert Williams as well I do like Aldridge if um, Tice does end up missing this one if Tice is able to play I still am interested in Aldridge because he just seems a little bit too cheap at 7300 next is Laurie Markin in 6900 he's going to be I think he's probable yeah he is probable Wendell Carr has already been ruled out so this is a very good matchup um, as we know against the Pelicans um, if Morgan is able to play, or start rather, at center, um, that's going to mean probably a double-double. More rebounds. We saw in the beginning of the season, he was getting like 15-plus rebounds a lot, and that's definitely possible. His price is up, but it makes sense. Um, he definitely would be priced like this if it uh, if he were to confirm to be starting at center. So, I'm learning Markkinen. Makes sense. 6900 It's a terrific matchup. He's kind of expensive, so I don't think he's going to be popular, but... Definitely deserves a, a tournament shot. And then Aaron Gordon, one of my favorite plays on the slate. 6,200 against the Wizards. Just a pace-up spot. He's starting at power four. Now it's at John and Isaac. And um, it's just a terrific spot for all these Magic players. There's going to be more rebounds, more shots. Gordon's a guy that can definitely get you a double-double. And he definitely is also a guy that can shoot threes, make them. And just overall, great spot for him. He's just too cheap for this um, role. So I really like Aaron Gordon. 6,200. Next, that is young. He's way more expensive this time around. But if he's able to start at power four and then just shift lower to center, it is a church matchup against the uh, Pelicans. So if, I don't think it's crazy. He is a pretty productive player because he does a little bit of everything. He's a very solid all around player. So 5400 still going to be in consideration because he's just a really productive player when he's on the court. Um, only if he starts, so he's coming off the bench and Gafford starts at center, then I don't want that young at all. Next, Ronnie Hall and Jefferson. I prefer him. 4900 against the Hornets, he didn't close, but that was also because, of, I think it's like O'Shea uh, Brissett, that guy, he played really well um, today, so Hall Jefferson, he probably should be able to play higher 20s, low 30s possibly in minutes, and he still remains really affordable without um, like all these injuries on the Raptors, he's starting at power forward, OG goes to small forward, so I do like RSJ, 4900 seems too cheap against the Hornets, who just are a very good matchup. They're not good defensively at all. And then um, Marquise Chris has been waived, so Omar Spellman may be a shot. Um, he's definitely going to get a blowout run too, so you're pretty safe um, with the minutes usually, but they're kind of inconsistent. You just know that Spellman is probably going to play like at least 20 minutes out there, but you don't really know what the ceiling is. But um, it is the Bucks, and it could be a blowout, so... Maybe you can go there, but it's definitely really thin. PJ Tucker's 4K against the um, Hawks. He's been playing really poorly, but that's just because he hasn't been shooting that well. Or really, he hasn't been shooting, period. Um, but without Westbrook, there probably means more rebounds for all these Rockets guys. And that's going to mean more shots, too. So I would expect PJ Tucker to go back to his usual shots of like at least 6 a game. And we know he's going to play heavy 30s, like close to 40 minutes every game. So... P.J. Tucker's price is now only 4K. It is a matchup where he can get steals and blocks as well. Um, so it's definitely worth a shot. Um, and we're trying to get um, multiple Rockets players because it is a pretty solid game to stack. And then on to center, lastly, Nikola Vucevic. He is 9, or 9K. I prefer him over Jokic. Jokic definitely has a terrific ceiling when he's... Um, a four-digit price tag, but Vucevic is just in a solid spot against the Wizards. It's a way faster, way better matchup, uh, way worse defense. Vucevic is priced up now, but um, he's still 9K, and it's a price that I would pick even if um, Jonathan Isaac were to be in. So um, he has like a 60-point ceiling. I think he's hit 70 in the past as well, so um, I definitely am interested in Vucevic. I think that um, he's just one of the best plays on the board, even though he's pretty expensive now. Um, I just think that the matchup, everything, he's just really in a terrific spot. I think I probably want to um, set a limit, though, in terms of how many Magic players I want to play. Like, make sure I don't go over maybe, like, three. Depends on who I'm playing, but 
just trying to spread it out, not play like Fournier, Gordon, and Vucevic all in the same lineup. I think they can definitely get there, but it's just tough because, you know, it's the same team. It's only one ball, 48 minutes to play. Um, they can only do so much, unless this game goes into like double overtime or something, obviously. Bayon Bio, 8,300 against the Pacers. The Pacers actually have been pretty bad against the opposing centers. They actually fit worst, um, so... It doesn't seem like that tough a matchup, actually, when you look into it. Bam Adebayo is just really consistent. He does a little bit of everything. He plays heavy minutes for a center. So 8,300 just remains um, a little bit too cheap, in my opinion, especially if Sabonis is out. That's going to mean less size in there. Um, doesn't really matter, actually, the effect of Sabonis being in or out, but just something that um, deserves a mention. So Bam Adebayo, 8,300 seems a little bit too cheap to me. Rudy Gobert seems cheap, too, because he's 7,800. He's just a guy that is pretty much a double-double lock, and he, you know, for the most part, he gets at least four drafting points a lot, and he barely missed out on double-double bonuses recently, so you know that um, Gobert is just going to be a solid defensive player, going to get blocks, especially with the Knicks. They have a big front court. They're going to be going to the basket a lot, so Gobert definitely has some solid shot-blocking opportunity as long as um, you know, he stays out of foul trouble, and usually a double-double lock, and the Knicks also are going to be on a back-to-back. Sure, there's some blowout risk, but um, I don't really want to consider that there. Next is going to be Clint Capella, 7,800. Um, terrific matchup once again, and without Westbrook, his rebounding numbers should go up, so Capella probably going to be a guy that should be able to get an easy double-double here. Probably could see mid-30s in minutes, and definitely could put up like a 20-20 game. I would not be surprised at all. There's definitely a very good ceiling here for him. And then Miles Turner, uh, 5,600 against um, the Heat. Uh, if Sabonis is out, I'm going to be interested in him. If Sabonis is in, I probably don't want him, but that just means that they probably go with, like, possibly Goga or Jakar Sampson, Doug McDermott. Um, it's tough to project because Sabonis, when he missed early on in the season in the two games um, in early November, Miles Turner was also out, so they had to play um, Sampson and Goga together, and they would go with lineups with, like, TJ Warren playing the power forward, Justin Holiday at small forward. They were just tinkering with their lineup, staying with the hot hand. So it is tough to predict, but I would say that if someone is wearing a miss, they probably just, you know, they obviously would start Turner, and whoever starts at power forward, Miles Turner, I would expect him to get a boost because whoever it replaces Simonis, their usage just isn't the same, and they're not as good of a rebounder. Um, so as Sabonis obviously so Turner probably is going to see a boost if Sabonis is out so that's why I'm interested in him he also plays a lot better at home if you're into home and a road or home and away splits and um they're gonna need Miles Turner out there against Bam Adebayo and then next in is Canner 5600 if Tice is out if Tice is in then probably don't want Canner but if Tice is out that just probably means Canner is gonna be out there for 30 maybe and he's probably gonna get the start too so Possibly over 30 minutes, definitely um, in play. Uh, 5600 seems a little bit too cheap if he's able to do that because he is a very productive fantasy player. And then next, Daniel Gafford, 4800 He is probable currently. It is a very nice matchup against the Pelicans, just a pace-up spot. And um, if he's able to start at center, he probably should see some pretty nice minutes, at least in the 20s. And um, he's a guy that rebounds pretty well. Um, he had a really good game. Um, recently um, against the Raptors there and last game he did really well as well so 4800 even though he's in price up he's still in play because he is a center and centers usually are able to hit value pretty well and then Daniel Tice 4400 he's probably going to be pretty low owned it is a tough matchup but if he's able to play and there's no limits they're probably going to need him over Canner because they're going to need his defense out on Aldridge so it's kind of a um, game where we could see Tice hover closer to high 20s in minutes than like the low 20s that he's been getting um, as opposed to more canner. So overall, honestly, I think James Harden is pretty much like an absolute lock here. I'm going to put him in. And then Eric Gorn going to be Chalk Value Rondé. I really like as well for value, just still too cheap. And Aaron Gorn, one of my favorite plays. Michael Porter, not that Gorn. Aaron Gorn and then Michael Porter Jr. Um, if he's able to start for Will Barton. He's too cheap at 3800 and then they'll use a lot of room, uh, a lot of money on the table, so I think a guy like Kyle Lowry makes sense, and then you have 4650 per player. You definitely can find some more value plays that I've mentioned throughout the video. So that's it for uh, this breakdown on the video. If you guys enjoyed it, please leave a like before you go. Also, please subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to make these videos more consistently uh, for all these NBA slates on the weekdays. 
So please uh, feel free, as always, to ask me any questions. You can post them down uh, below on the YouTube comments, or you can also find me on Twitter. You can at me or DM me on there, whatever you prefer, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. It's at Waffles. Link will be in the description below. And again, thank you guys for watching, and good luck on the slate. Bye.